Google's being sued by the Department of Justice for being a monopoly. The Department of Justice is seeking to break up Google in specific to their search engine and the agreements they have with other companies. Now, this is a very, very big lawsuit. We know that big tech is running afoul with the government frequently, but this one is special. This is described to be a landmark case, similar to Microsoft being broken up decades ago. Now, this is also particularly interesting to me because I hold only a handful of companies. I have very concentrated positions and Google happens to be one of my largest holdings in the story fund. The total combined portfolio value of the story fund is $167,000 and I only have six companies. Google here is the third largest position with a $32,500 position, 5,900 of that being gains. This means it's a 20% weighted position in this portfolio. 20% weighting is a massive weighting. One fifth of my portfolio is in Google and it's only exceeded by Netflix and Amazon. Now you might ask, why do I have such a big concentration into Google? Well, on this channel, we don't buy weak companies. We don't buy garbage companies. We buy exceedingly high quality companies, ones that I call compounding machines. I define these compounders as ones that have dominant market positions and high barriers to entry. They have deeply entrenched brand values and distribution. They have excellent balance sheets. They have pricing power. They have organic growth. They have operating leverage and scalability. These are companies that most people consider to be toll booths, monopolies, or companies that are gatekeepers. Those are all the hot buzzwords used to describe them. They're other euphemisms for how powerful these companies are. They typically sit as the largest or at least second largest in their given industry. And they have very predictable return on investment for both their CapEx and R&D. These companies provide predictable and repeatable returns for investors. These are the specific types of companies that I concentrate into in my portfolio. So when we look at the type of companies that I'm in, they have these characteristics. And the type of company that most frequently has these characteristics is big tech. Companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. These companies are dominant and the government stands as the only one that can really stop them. So here we have the government continually stepping in to try to stopping them, or at least taking fees from them. The EU has made a habit of taking fees from big tech. In 2019, the EU fined Google 1.49 billion for abusive practices in online advertising. This is a bigger fine than the EU fining Volkswagen for their massive emission scandal. Over the years, other companies like Apple have been hit with numerous EU antitrust fines. And again, these are like speeding tickets. It hasn't slowed down the company, it just cost them a little bit of money on the way. The EU has made this almost a, a way to raise funds. It's like extracting money out of big tech because they know that they have a lot of money, they'll pay these tickets and continue to do business in the EU. So we're used to many cases of Europe and even the US finding these companies they pay the ticket and they continue to move on. It's almost become routine at this point to where you disregard these type of lawsuits. But this one is different. The Department of Justice is not looking for a little fine. They don't wanna extract a billion or $2 billion out of Google and then have them go along business as usual. They want a big victory. They're staking their reputation and they're trying to show that in this case, the Department of Justice can bring a successful lawsuit against big tech and they're looking to change the relationship and the, the marketplace of Google search, their core business. Now, if we go into the lawsuit, we'll go into the mechanics of how they're planning on doing this. The article starts off by setting the landscape. And again, we have the biggest tech monopoly trial since the Department of Justice challenged Microsoft more than 20 years ago. This is what they're comparing it to. So this isn't just a speeding ticket. This is something where they're really trying to, to set their mark here. So here's where we get to their case. Over the next few months, the Department of Justice and a collection of state attorney generals will make their case to a DC district court judge for why Google has allegedly violated anti-monopoly law through exclusive agreements with mobile phone manufacturers and browser makers to make its search engine the default for consumers. That is the biggest part that this case hinges on. They're saying that Google has all of these agreements to make their, their search engine default. Whenever someone downloads a device or they buy a new phone, they turn on the browser and the browser has google.com as a default page. Google in turn will seek to tell the judge 
why its behavior is not anti-competitive and instead provides a better experience for consumers. Now that's a little summary of it. Of course, the arguments are gonna be much more nuanced. They continue on saying that at stake in this trial is the chance for the Department of Justice to prove it can bring a successful anti-monopoly case in the modern digital age. The DOJ will likely strive to show that enforcement of antitrust laws, not the absence of them, is what can unlock innovation. Just as many believe it's the victory in the Microsoft case that paved the way for generations of companies, including Google, to thrive in more open internet ecosystem. So the DOJ is gonna be pointing back to the Microsoft case, saying, look what happened to Microsoft. They were trying to do all these anti-competitive things by making it so that their system you install on any device had all of their stuff and no one else's. And we, we went after Microsoft, we won a successful case, and now look, Google is the consequence of that ruling. So having more restriction actually creates competition, it doesn't weaken it. That is the case of the DOJ. Further, the DOJ will argue that Google is a $1.7 trillion company, quote, because they have illegal monopolies. And there is no denying that when it comes to search, Google's default search agreements block out competitors. They pay companies not to compete against them and prevent better products and results from getting in front of customers. So Google's using their huge wallet to pay companies not to compete against them. They're paying away competition. That's basically the case being made here. And had they not been doing this, maybe we would get some other great search engines that would be better than Google. Now, on the surface, this does look like a very strong argument. In fact, when we look at the actual data here, there's some interesting pieces of data that a lot of investors in Google forget. For example, when we look at the food chain, which company is more powerful between Google and Apple? Consider this in that discussion. Apple has surpassed 2 billion in active devices. Now, we don't know how many users are using it. It might be two or three devices per user, but 2 billion active devices is massive. And the type of devices that Apple sells are expensive. They usually go to people that have more money. So Apple has an install base of 2 billion of high income people when comparing worldwide. Now, Google has an agreement with Apple where they pay Apple to be the default search engine on Safari's browser. So all of these Apple devices come pre-installed with Safari, which is Apple's browser, and then Apple charges shelf space. Basically, they say, who's gonna pay us the highest amount to have the default website here, the default search engine? Google's the one that always chooses to pay the most, more than any other company, more than Microsoft, for example. Google's paying an estimated $20 billion annually to be Safari's default search engine. Now, even with the size of these companies, Google and Apple, $20 billion annually is still a massive amount of money. Google generated around $70 billion of free cash flow last year. So this payment to Apple represents a meaningful amount of money, even for a company the size of Google. And this is at the core of the DOJ's argument. They're saying that Google is buying up all of the devices, all of this install base, making their search engine defaulted. And once you have the default search engine, you really have no incentive to change it. If it comes pre-installed with Google, why would you go change it to a different third-party search engine? Most people, in fact, a lot, of, a lot of people are just lazy. They're gonna use whatever is the default search engine. If it came with Apple Search or Bing, they'd probably end up using that more as well. Of course, some people would switch, die hard fans of Google, but a lot of people would remain with whatever search engine is defaulted. So the DOJ is arguing that this behavior from Google is anti-competitive. Now, of course, Google doesn't see this as anything nefarious. They have shelf space at sale at Apple with their devices. You can buy and pay to be the most promoted product. And Google is a company that's willing to pay the most. That's just business. In fact, this type of thing happens commonly with shelf space in grocery stores. Companies pay extra to have the end cap on an aisle, for example. They also say, quote, this is a backwards looking case at a time of unprecedented innovation, including breakthroughs in AI, new apps and new services, all of which are creating more competition, and more options for people than ever before. They say that people don't use Google because they have to, they use it because they want to. It's easy to switch your default search engine. We're long past the era of dial-up internet and CD-ROMs. So Google's saying, hey, look, this is a time of innovation, unprecedented levels of innovation. Have you not been keeping up, DOJ? Have you not seen what's happened with AI, chatbot, ChatGPT, Bing search over the past year? 
our stock price fell a lot. We were concerned about competition. So Google's framing this as a DOJ living in the past where it was just Google controlled everything. You simply typed into a box and you got links. And now the entire landscape has shifted. Google is concerned about competition. At the same time, the DOJ is saying that they're anti-competitive and they have a monopoly. So both of them are seeing this through very different perspectives. Now there's other companies that happen to be impacted by this as well. Like we've seen, Apple has a $20 billion per year high margin income stream from Google. Consider the fact that by offering default search and selling that shelf space for Apple devices, they get $20 billion of incremental revenue per year. But unlike most of Apple's revenue that requires selling devices and manufacturing them and design and R&D and research, this doesn't require any of that. This is just the devices and a default browser. So this really is an incremental $20 billion of incredibly high margin revenue. We don't know what the numbers would be, but this could have a substantial negative impact immediately on Apple if Google loses this case. So Google's not the only company that will be potentially impacted by this. Another thing we can look at is specifically with Google, Google has claimed that people don't use Google because it's a monopoly and they're forced to, it's easy to change and people use Google because they want to. If that's the case and Google stops paying Apple 20 billion per year, and instead they just keep that money and return it back to shareholders, that is $20 billion more in free cash flow per year. But on the other hand, in the scenario that people by and large just use whatever search engine happens to be defaulted on the browser of whatever device they buy, then that's not good for Google. That means that another company holds all the power. In that case, it's this company. So this really is a battle of what company holds the power here. Do people use Google search only because it's defaulted on Apple or do they use Google search because they love Google search products? We'll get to see the outcome of this if the DOJ case is successful. If they break up this agreement between Google and Apple, we'll get to see who holds the power, the default search option or Google. So I'm very interested to see the outcome of this case. If I had a guess right now, I think if Google is no longer to be the default option on Apple devices, that that would impact their market share. I know people like my parents, for example, that don't have a strong preference on which search they use. They use whatever just comes with the device. They see a box, they search in, and they get results there. So if Apple came out with Apple Search or if there is Bing.com or whatever it may be, they'll probably keep that one defaulted. But then there's people like me that really like Google Search and I'll go out of my way to change it. So I have to imagine there's some mix of people in there that would no longer use Google Search and Google Search's market would decline. To a devastating amount, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I'm very interested in the outcome of this case. In the long term of both of these companies, I see both of them doing just fine. Google's diversified, not with just their search, but through all these different AI projects. They have Google Cloud, they have YouTube, they have Android. They have a lot of levers to pull. So I'm not so focused on this one agreement, and I don't think it's going to be devastation for Google. I also think that Apple, if they can prove how effective their default position is, they will have a lot of selling point to find another bidder for this shelf space. And ultimately, if Apple can't get a good bid for a competing search engine, they might just start one of their own. But that is what we know of the case right now. I'll continue to follow this as it evolves. So if you wanna see updates, make sure you subscribe to the channel.